Well, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called distinct subsequences. So given two strings s and t, return the number of distinct subsequence of s which equals t. So a string's subsequence is a new string formed from the original string by deleting sum, can be none, of characters without disrupting the remaining characters' relative or, uh, positions. So you can see here we have an example, right? Where, uh, let's say we have ACE. ACE is a subsequence of A, B, C, D, E because you can see A is come before C and C is come before E. So in this case, the subsequence is the same relative order as this or original string, right? But the thing is that AEC is not a subsequence of this because you can see here that A is come before E, that's correct, but C should not come after E, right? In this case, you can see here E is comes after C, but C should not come after E. So in this case, this is not a subsequence of this, right? So we must, subsequence must uh, follow the same relative positions as uh, from the original string, right? So here you can see we have our S and we have our T, right? So in this case, we have our S string and T string. So in this case, the output is three because there are three ways you can generate T from S, right? So in this case, one subsequence from S could be this and a B here, right? R, B, and B, I, T. R, A, B, and B, I, T, right? So in this case, another example would be R, A, B, B, I, T, right? Another example would be R, A, B, B, and I, T, right? So you can see here, we can generate three separate combination uh three separate subsequence from s that equal to t right so you can see that basically this is how we solve or in this case this is basically what we want to output is a number that represents how many distinct subsequence in s that equal to t so let's take a look at the constraints so the constraints here is you can see here that uh s length length of s and t, uh, length of t is between one to one thousand and then uh, s and t should consist of english letters so let's take a look at a couple of base cases here. So let's say we have a situation where S is equal to empty string, right? And T is equal to an empty string as well. So what's the output look like? So the output is actually going to be one because you can see here, an empty string is a subsequence in S and that subsequence is equal to T. So therefore the output is one. Now, however, though, let's say if S is equal to A and then T is equal to empty string, we still output is equal to one, right? Because you can see here that empty string is also a subsequence in S and that subsequence is equal to T. So therefore the output is one. Now, let's say if S is equal to an empty string, but T is equal to A, then the output is gonna be zero, right? because you can see here that there is no subsequence in S that equal to T. So therefore the output is zero. So let's take a look at another example, right? So let's let's say we have two strings here, ABB and AB. Forget about how many distinct subsequence we can find in S that have that's equal to B. Let's take a look at how we can be able to find one subsequence in S that is equal to B, right? So we can see here what we can do is that we can basically have our pointer points to the last character in S and have another pointer point to the last character in T. We're going to have our pointers go from the back to the front. You can also go from the front to the back. But basically you can see here, we're basically check comparing two characters, right? In this case, that S at the last character, in this case, the current character in S and current character in T, they do equal to each other. So what we do is we move our pointer, right? So in this case, we move our pointer one to the left. And then we also moving one of our pointers in T one to the left to compare to see if they're the same, right? In this case, they're not the same. So what we do is we basically move our pointer one to the left, right, for our T string. In this case, you can see this is basically what we're doing is that if they are the same, right, then what we're gonna do is that we're trying to figure out maybe how what's the total distinct characters that we have for the remaining substrings, right? For the remaining substring, right? In this case, you can see if they equal each other, B and B, they do equal to each other. So in this case, if I want to find a total distinct subsequence for the current string, if the current characters in S and current character in T, they do equal to each other. So what we do is we basically have our pointer, right, uh, move one to the left to, to figure out how many distinct subsequence or how many unique subsequence that we have 
in the remaining string, right? And if they don't equal each other, in this case, uh, we basically just going to uh, move, right? In this case, move the left pointer, uh, move the, the, the pointer for the S string, one to the left, to figure out what's the total of this thing subsequence, right? But there could also be a situation here, you can see at the end, you can see we're going to get A and B here, right, from S. But the thing is that there could also be a sub sequence that we could have A, B, right? Where we're starting our pointer at here, right, which is here. We're starting our pointer here, comparing with this pointer, right, character for this pointer. You can see this B and this B right here, they do equal to each other, right? So we don't have to just compare this character with this character. We also have to compare the remaining substring for uh, in S with the current substring in T, right? So you can see here, we basically just go also going to uh, get the total, right? This thing subsequence starting from the nest character, right? The nest character in or the nest substring in S comparing with the current substring that we have in T, right? Because you can see here, we can also have BB here and an AA here, right? So that will be one substring that we can be able to generate. So this is our recursion tree. And then you can see S is ABB and then T is AB. And then we can go down. In this case, we can, there's two ways because now B, they do equal each other, right? If they don't equal each other, then we're just going to uh, go down to S at I minus one. Basically, we're just going to uh, look at the substring. A remaining substring for S comparing with the current substring with T, right? So in this case, they do match. So what we do is we're going down two paths. One path is we're going to check the remaining substring in S and remaining substring in T to see what's the total distinct subsequence. And the other path is we check the remaining substring in S and then the current substring in T, right? So you, you can see here for the current substring in T and then the remaining substring in S is AB and then current substring in T is AB, right? So in this case, we're going to go down this path. Uh, in this case, we have AA, right? We can also go down where, uh, in this case, we're just going to take the remaining substrate in S and remaining substrate in T, and then there's one path. If I go down this path where I take the remaining substrate in S and the current substrate in T, in this case, there's no path. And then now, in this case, if I backtrack and I go back, go down this path, then you can see here that if I take the remaining substrates, uh, in this case, the remaining substrates in S and remaining substrings in T, there's one path where we can basically go down this way and then there's one path. And you can see that there's a total of two distinct subsequence that we can generate uh, for this input. So now let's take a look at a bigger example, right? So let's say we have A, B, A, B and A, B. Okay, so in this case, this is our recursion tree and what we're expecting is we're expecting three, right? We can have A, B as that's equal to t, we can have a, b like this, where we can also have a, b like this, which is also equal to t. So their total, the output I'm expecting is three, right? So in this case, you can see we're starting from the roots, and then in this case, we have a, b, a, b, and it is a, b. So in this case, we can go down two paths, because now the last characters do equal to each other, right? So in this case, what we can do is that we can go down this path, where we're basically just focused on the remaining substring for s and the remaining substring of t. In this case, we have a, b, a, and a, right? And in this case, you can see we can go down this two path. So in this case, we can get the subcurrent substrings of, um, re in this case, S and T, right? The current substrings, a uh, current remaining sub, uh, remaining substrings of the S, comparing with the remaining substring with T. In this case, empty string with T, and and then we have A B and S. This is one. The reason why we have one, just like I mentioned before, right? Let's say if we have a situation where this is S and then we have empty string in T. This is our T, this is our S, right? In this case, an empty string is a subsequence in S that is equal to T, right? So therefore, in this case, we're just going to return one. But however though, let's say we have an empty string in S and we have A and T, there's no subsequence in A, there's no subsequence in, in, in S that is equal to A, that, right, that is equal to T. So therefore, there's no subsequence if we have a situation like this. So therefore, we're returning one. Uh, so here you can see we can also go down another path where we're not taking the we're taking the current substring in T, and we're taking the remaining substrings in S. In this case, AB comparing with the current substring in, in T, 
In this case, we can also go down this path where we can have AA, right? Because now they're, they, these characters, they don't equal each other. So we take the remaining of S, right? And the current substring was T, and then we're going down this path, right? So we have one. So in this case, so far we have two, so we can backtrack to the root here, and then we're going down the other path. In this case, you can see we can also have a B, a, a, B, a and AB, right? So we're taking the, the remaining substring of S and then the current substring of T. Uh, yeah. So then in this case, for this one right here, you can see the last character doesn't equal each other. So we're taking the remaining substring in S and then the current substring in T. So we're going down this path, so we have AB and AB. In this case, you can see we're taking the remaining substrings of S and T, right, to, to make it one path. In this case, we can have AA, which is one. And then we can also have just like remaining substring of S and then the current substring of T. In this case, you can see here, uh, they don't equal each other for last characters. So we're taking the remaining substrings of S, which is just an empty string, and then the remaining substring of T, which is just an A, right? Uh, sorry, just a b because we cannot take the remain. We have to take the current substrings in in, uh, in in t. So in this case, we have an empty string for s, and then the current string in t is a b. But you can see here, just like I mentioned, if s is empty string and then t is a character a or a b or the a b c, it doesn't matter. So in this case, there is zero because there is no way that there is no subsequence in s that is equal to t, right? So in this case, we're outputting two. Uh, we're outputting zero. And then you can see if we collect all our ones here, you can see we have three ones and the output is three, right? Now, as you can see here, um, this is our top-down approach, right? This is our recursion tree. And you can see here that this computation is computed multiple times, right? This computed it multiple times. So what we can do is that we can basically just have a cache uh, to basically cache the current index, right? The current index of S and current index of T in a 2D cache array, so that if this is already computed before, right, we only have one character left for S and we only have one character left for T, then we compute that pre-computed result in a 2D array, so that if we visit that situation again, we can basically retrieve that in the, in the cache array, right? So now let's take a look at the top-down approach. So you can see here, this is our top-down approach, right? And this is our non-distinct function, which takes the S string and the T string, and then we're first creating some global variables here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to define our base case. And our base case is that if S is smaller than T, that we know that there's no subsequence uh, in S that we can generate that equals to T, right? Because you can see this, the size of S is not equal to T, right? It's less than T. So then we create our cache array. And then in this case, you can see here the cache array, which basically is the size or basically is S times T, right? So in this case, that's basically our space complexity as well. And then we're calling this DFX, DFX function, uh, DFS function, and then we're passing in, we're starting from the last character for both strings. So this is the T index, which is the last character initially. And then this is the S index, which is the last character initially. And at first we define our base case, right? Just like our recursion tree that we saw. Uh, let's say we have a situation where S is not empty and T is empty, right? Then we can be able to find a empty string and empty string is basically a subsequence in s that is equal to t so therefore we return one if they're all equal to empty string then in, in this case we can also equal we can also return one because s uh, a uh, empty string is a subsequence of s that is equal to t however though if t is not empty but s is empty so therefore there's no way that s can be able to generate t Right, there's no subsequence in S that's equal to T. So therefore, we're returning zero. So once we have our three base case defined, then what we're going to do is we're going to see if, it's, if this current uh, computation is already computed in our cache. If it is, then we're going to return that. If not, what we're going to do is we're going to comp compute it. Now, just like I mentioned before, there are two uh, paths we can branch out to, right? But however, it depends on the condition. If the current character in S and current character in T is equal to each other, so what we're going to do is we're going to compute the current position, right? The, the current position is basically either, uh, or sorry, is we can go down one path where we're going to comparing the remaining substrings for both strings, or we're going to comparing the remaining substrings in S uh, and then the current substrings in T. 
And then the other path is that if they don't equal each other, we're basically just going to do this, right? We're going to compute the current position, right? The current situation where the current, we're going to compare it with the current, subs, uh, current substrains in S with the current strains uh, in, in T, right? Current, current substrains in T with the remaining substrains in S, right? And we're going to save it in our cache, and then we're going to return that as our result for the current position. And this is basically how we're going to do it or how we solve this problem using a top-down approach. Uh, so before we jump into the bottom-up approach, I want to talk about the time complexity. So time complexity is basically just going to be S times T, right? The size of our size of S times the size of our T. And the space complexity, because we're using our 2D cache array with T times S, in this case, we have a space complexity of uh, S times T, right? So now let's take a look at a bottom-up approach. So for our bottom-up approach, you can see on the right, we have our 2D table, right? Which is basically S times T. But the thing is that you can see there's also an extra space there, right? This extra row and extra column is basically an empty strain. This is our base case. Just like I mentioned before, if, our, uh, if we have, let's say we have S, which is equal to an empty strain, and T, right, is equal to, let's say, A or something, right? In this case, you can see we should have zero distinct subsequence, right? However, though, if S is equal to, let's say, A or let's say empty string, and then T is equal to a empty string. In this case, there should be one solution, right? If it's an empty, empty, we're just going to have one distinct subsequence, right? And then if S is equal to, let's say, A, right? And then that we're just, we have T, which is equal to empty string, then there should be one distinct subsequence, right? Because in this case, an empty string in S is a distinct, is a subsequence that is equal to T, right? So we're going to have that row, that entire row, to be one. So that's what we're doing here. We're building the first row and fill them up with just once. And then the second row, we're going to, you can see for our nested loop, we're actually starting at here because we already have the outer layer defined, uh, or the, in this case, the second row and second column, I should say. So you can see here that we basically do our check. If the current character doesn't equal each other, then what we're going to do is we're basically just going to, uh, you know, either take two paths, right? Either take uh, the remaining substrains, right? The remaining substrains of T, oh, sorry, remaining substrains of T comparing with remaining substrains of S, or I take the current substrains in T comparing with the remaining substrains in S which is basically those two positions, right? So that's basically the uh, remaining substrains in S comparing with remaining substrains in T. This position is basically remaining substrains in S comparing with the current substrains in T, right? So in this case, there's one distinct subsequence here, zero distinct subsequence here. So I'm, I'm going to get the sum of that, which is one, right? And then you can also see here, we're basically building up our table here. You can see that for B, we know that the uh, B, in this case, they don't equal each other, right? So if they if R and B doesn't equal each other, so what we do is we basically inherit from the uh, from this from this value right here, right? Because in this case, if they don't equal each other, so we're just basically taking the remaining substrains in S, comparing with the current substrains in T, so which is basically just one. We're just inherit that value from here. And same thing here, if they don't equal each other, we just inherit that value from the previous uh, previous column, same row and previous column, right? And then for this for this position, for this row, right? Same thing here, in this case, they don't equal each other. So I'm going to inherit it from the previous column, which is here. Here, in this case, they do not they do equal each other. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that. Um, in this case, we're going to comparing with the remaining substrains, right? which is basically one and zero, right? Which is the sum of that, which is one. And now here, you can see those two are equal to each other. So in this case, we're basically just taking the sum for those two, right? So in this case, you can see the answer is just basically two. And this is what we're doing here. At the end, we're basically just take, returning the last element in the 2D array, right? So this is basically how we solve the problem, the time complexity and space complexity it's basically just going to be T times S, right? So there you have it, and thank you for watching.